data lies, but it lies because we let it. So let's not let it. Let's ask the right questions. So what do I mean by that? In the next 10 minutes, I'm going to go over a deceptively simple exercise that data scientists go through when they first start at LinkedIn. The question is very simple. What are the hottest industries according to the LinkedIn data this year? There's one small detail that I left out. What's the definition of hot? Well, let's look at the data and see what kind of information do we have to answer that question. There's 120 million profiles on LinkedIn, and we have their industry and the date they join. So what we could do is look at the year-over-year -year growth of a certain industry and call that hot, right? That idea is not so hot. In the best case, you have this kind of indicator of what the LinkedIn penetration is like in a certain industry. At the worst case, you have, whoa, sorry, go back. In the worst case, you have this contrarian indicator because people might be joining LinkedIn when they're looking to transition out of, a, of an industry. So, not a great idea. So, sorry, go back. Can we go back? Okay, so I have another idea. There are these profiles on LinkedIn and we have the people's positions and they also have an industry. So, and they also have a start date. So what we could do is look at the year-over-year -year growth of job starters in that area. Okay, so we're doing that, changing the definition. There's one small problem. We didn't account for external factors. We didn't account for promotions and for churn. What we need to do is look at the net inflow and subtract the people who are going out of an industry from people who are coming into an industry. Okay, so another external factor that you need to take into account is seasonality. If you're doing this in the summer, you're a summer intern starting at LinkedIn as a data scientist team, and you see that there's a lot fewer teachers and a lot more accountant and a lot more summer interns, right? So what we want to do is compare the right time period with the right time period last year. Another external factor, size matters. Because if it didn't, it would look like the dairy industry and the metal and mining industry are the hottest industries on LinkedIn. And that's because they're small industries on LinkedIn and it's much easier to grow off of a small base. So this has got to be it, right? We have taken into account seasonality, we took a look at the net inflow, and we thresholded the industry, right? Except there's one more thing. We assume the data is clean, and it never is, right? For example, on LinkedIn, there's all of these fake accounts that we've closed, but they're still there in the database. So if you don't take them out, you have this army of Darth Vader's boosting up the defense and space industry. <laughs> Not so great, right? Or, for example, you might have some um, skewed distribution in your data. Uh, it might make sense to include people who have 200 positions on their LinkedIn profile, or it might make sense to threshold those people out. We have to put the data under a microscope and check for every flag and category and date and decide what it means. So 
So we've done that. We did all the right things, asked the right questions. So we're ready to look at year-over-year -year industry growth. It looks something like this. It's a bunch of spaghetti. It's a spaghetti chart that a spaghetti chart that kind of reflects the overall economic condition, the overall industry, econo economic uh, decline or booming. And this is not very useful. What we want to do is take out that overall signal. And the way we do that is by normalizing or scaling your data. In this example, what we can do is take a look at the number of job starters in a given year and use that as your denominator. Use that to divide by. Okay. This has got to be it, right? This is the definition. We took into account the seasonality. We normalized. We look at the net inflow. We took out the noise and we thresholded. It. It's got to be good, right? Well, yeah, we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. We, you can see s some trends developing. You can see some, um, big, some, some big growth in the internet industry around the right time. Uh, you can see things are happening there. There's something going on in real estate. But it still looks like spaghetti. And it doesn't tell a story. To tell a story, you need to make some tough choices. So what you need to do is focus on one or two or maybe three things that you want to tell, that you want to focus on, and clear everything out. So now this is more like it, right? You can, if, if an industry is above that line, that zero line, it means it's growing. So you can see the internet industry taking off in 1994, and then a big boom in the internet industry in 2000, and then the corresponding bust. Real estate growing steadily over the years, then whoa, taking off, and then sinking. Same thing happening with financial services. And remember, this is all from aggregate data on LinkedIn. Isn't that amazing that you can see this information from the data that people contributed? This is the kind of story that gets people excited about the insights in the LinkedIn data. So let's have some fun with it. Let's use the same methodology to look at the growth of analytics and data scientists, in this, in, uh, data scientists jobs over the years. Amazing growth. You've probably seen this chart before. But what's more amazing is that this data is properly normalized. It's not just a count of people starting jobs in that industry. It's actually normalized. So this makes, this makes this chart even more compelling. So next time you look at your data, look at your external factors. Take out your noise and ask the right questions. That's it. Mm -hmm.